Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 2.1 cell structure. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 2.1 you need to be able to describe the term cell, tissue, organ, organ system and organism, understand how new cells are produced, describe the structure of a plant cell, animal cell and bacterial cell and describe the functions of these structures and state the specific functions of certain specialized cells. By taking an extremely thin section of plant or animal tissue, applying a dye or stain and viewing it under the microscope, thousands of tiny box-like structures can be seen. These are cells, the building blocks of living things. In plants and animals, cells are extremely numerous. For example, it's estimated that humans have up to 40 trillion of them. This means that any one cell on its own has essentially no impact on the functioning of the organism, which is why cells are grouped and work together in vast numbers. Tissues are groups of cells with similar structures that work together to perform a shared function. For example, one kind of muscle cell forms a sheet of muscle tissue which is capable of contracting, while epithelial cells form an epithelium which is a thin layer that lines the surfaces of the body like the inside of the mouth, windpipe and intestines. Organs are structures made up of groups of tissues that work together to perform a specific function. For example, the small intestine is a digestive organ that contains tissues made from gland cells, muscle cells, nerve cells and epithelial cells. Further examples of organs include the lungs and brain in animals and the root, stem and leaves in plants. Next, organ systems are groups of organs with related functions that work together to perform a specific body function. For example, the heart and blood vessels make up the circulatory system, the brain, spinal cord and nerves make up the nervous system, and in plants, the stem, leaves and reproductive parts make up the shoot system, which we'll return to in chapter 8. Finally, an organism is a complete living thing made up of multiple organ systems. Organisms can survive independently and exhibit the properties of life. Next, you need to be able to describe the structure of animal cells and plant cells and the functions of these structures. We'll begin with the structures that are common to both types of cells. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance containing nutrient particles and organelles, which are the components of cells that perform specific roles. It's the site of chemical reactions and is enclosed by a cell membrane. The cell membrane is a partially permeable layer that holds the contents of the cell in place and controls the movement of substances both into and out of the cell. The nucleus contains most of the cell's genetic material in the form of DNA, which is organized into structures called chromosomes. The nucleus essentially controls the cell's activities, which include cell development and division. Mitochondria are circular or oval-shaped organelles that release energy from nutrients like glucose via aerobic respiration. And don't worry, we'll return to respiration in chapter 12. Ribosomes are small circular structures that are either attached to a membrane or found free within the cytoplasm. They're responsible for protein synthesis or the production of new proteins. Now onto the features that make plant cells unique from animal cells. Plant cells have a cell wall, which is a tough layer made of cellulose surrounding the cell membrane. It prevents cells from bursting and allows water and salts to pass through freely. Chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, which is a green pigment that plays a crucial role in photosynthesis or the conversion of light into energy. Finally, a vacuole is a fluid-filled space surrounded by a membrane. It contains cell sap, a watery solution of sugars and salts, and helps to give cells firmness and structure by pushing outwards against the cytoplasm and cell wall. In addition to plant and animal cells, you also need to know about bacterial cells. So bacteria are single-celled organisms and like plant and animal cells, they have a cytoplasm, cell membrane and ribosomes. They're also surrounded by a cell wall, but unlike plants, this wall is not made of cellulose. Bacterial cells have no nucleus. Instead, each cell contains a single chromosome made of a coiled strand of DNA. They also contain plasmids, which are small circular structures that are also made of DNA. They carry additional genetic information that helps the bacterium to survive and reproduce. Next, you need to know a little bit about how new cells are produced, although this will be covered in greater detail in chapter 17. The process by which new cells are produced is known as mitosis, or cell division, and is controlled by the nucleus. First, the chromosomes are replicated, and then the nucleus divides. Of the two cells that are formed, one may keep the ability to divide, while the other may become a specialized cell with a specific shape and function. 
Now, multicellular organisms possess a wide variety of specialised cells, and there are six specialised animal and plant cells that you need to know. Ciliated cells line the structures of the respiratory system and are covered with tiny hair-like filaments called cilia. These cilia are covered with mucus, which traps dust and bacteria, and are capable of moving to create a continuous flow of mucus away from the lungs. Neurons, or nerve cells, are specialised to deliver information throughout the body in the form of electrical impulses. These cells are often very long as they connect distant parts of the body, like the feet, to the brain and spinal cord. Next, red blood cells are responsible for transporting oxygen to the body's tissues. They contain a protein called haemoglobin, which binds to oxygen forming oxyhemoglobin. They also have a specialised shape called a biconcave disc that maximises their surface area and allows gases to be absorbed more easily. Sperm and egg cells, otherwise known as gametes, are the sex cells whose sole purpose is reproduction. Sperm cells are composed of three sections. The head has a nucleus which contains the cell's DNA and an acrosome that secretes enzymes that help the sperm cell penetrate the egg. The midsection is densely packed with mitochondria to provide energy for movement, and the tail allows the sperm cell to swim. Egg cells have a nucleus, cell membrane and jelly coat, as well as a large cytoplasm that contains yolk droplets made of proteins and fats. These droplets provide nutrition during the early stages of development following conception. Root hair cells in plants are specialised to absorb water and minerals from the soil. The hair-like projection on each cell penetrates between the soil particles and provides a large surface area for absorption. In addition, the cell membrane is able to selectively control which substances enter the cell. Finally, palisade mesophyll cells are found just under the surface or upper epidermis of plant leaves and are densely packed with chloroplasts. Their role is to convert light energy into glucose via photosynthesis. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 2.1, cell structure. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription and I'll see you next time for topic 2.2, size of specimens.